Hello and welcome to lesson number 19 of our look at Luther's small catechism. We are still in the first article of the Apostles' Creed. Today we're going to be focusing on the fall into sin with Adam and Eve. Let's review the first article and its meaning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God created me and all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Question number one. What do the following passages tell us about the devil? We're going to read all three right away. 2 Peter 2 verse 4 says, God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment. Jude 6 says, the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. And then 1 Peter 5 verse 8 your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So what do we know about the Bible from these passages? Basically, the devil is an angel. He's an evil angel. He was created good, but led a rebellion against God. He is God's enemy, and he is also our enemy. And he is looking to destroy every person's soul in the lasting time in the everlasting torment of hell. So he's a very serious enemy that we face. Number two, reveal the details of Genesis chapter three account of Adam and Eve's fall into sin. So God created the world perfectly in six days. He created Adam and Eve in a very special way. And he placed them in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, there was a tree that they were not allowed to eat from called the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. And you might ask, well, if they, if they weren't supposed to eat from it, why did God put it there? Well, by not eating of it, they would be honoring and worshiping God. It was kind of, uh, Martin Luther called it their altar or their church by saying, you know, by saying, I don't want to eat from that. They were trusting God and his message. Well, one day... The devil, in the form of a serpent, in the form of a snake, was talking to them, uh, which should have been their first clue that something was wrong. And he started to question God and the value of trusting in the Lord. And Adam and Eve both partook of the fruit. They both ate from it. And immediately they realized that they were sinful. And they tried to hide from God. Um, but uh, God came to them, called out to them. They did not at first confess their sin to God. Instead, they blamed Adam, blamed Eve, Eve blamed the serpent. Uh, and God gave them the consequence for that. They would be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They would suffer all kinds of problems. But God also gave them the first gospel passage in Genesis, Genesis 3.15, where he revealed that one day a Savior would come and he would crush the work of the serpent. Number three, according to the following passage, what were some of the results of Adam and Eve's fall into sin? So this is from Genesis 3. To the woman, God said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. So what were some of the consequences of their sin? Well, pain is a big one. We look, we look at childbearing pain uh, there. We also see there's going to be marital problems where once you know, um, Adam called out, you know, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Uh, this is a beautiful gift from God, this amazing creature called Eve. And now there's going to be problems in that relationship between Adam and Eve. God said that 
the ground wasn't going to produce like it used to in a perfect way that, that Adam was going to have to farm in a painful way and that there would be weeds and thorns. And the worst consequence of their sin was that ultimately they would die. And if they died in unbelief, they would eternally die in hell. Number four, read the following passage. What was another result of the fall into sin? Genesis 5, when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. And when they were created, he called them man. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son. And here's the key phrase. He had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named him Seth. So Adam and Eve were created in the image of God, but that was lost. And now all the children of Adam and Eve are born in the image of Adam. Well, what does that mean? Well, the image of God, letter A, is that we are sinless and holy, but the image of man is that we are sinful and unholy. Uh, so these are all going to be the opposite. Those who have the image of God have free will. And they were able not to sin. Adam and Eve didn't have to sin. But because we are born in the image of Adam, we are unable to not sin. They were made perfect in perfect fellowship with God. We, Our relationship with God has been destroyed because of our sinfulness. And Adam and Eve had a perfect knowledge of God's will, and we have an imperfect one. We looked at that a while back when we looked at the revealed knowledge of God. Uh, we do have a natural knowledge. We know there's a God, but ultimately we can only know him through his revealed word. Number six, the Bible's teaching that people are born in a sinful condition may be difficult to accept. How do the following support the doctrine of original sin? This goes to the idea, original sin really is against the idea that, well, we're all basically good. All people are basically good. That's not true at all. That's, that's false. The Bible says we're basically evil. Uh, the message of scripture, Psalm 51, verse 5, Surely I was sinful from birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Romans 6, 23 says that the wages of sin is death. So why is there so much death in the world? Because we are evil. Um, that gets to the death of a newborn. If we were basically good, um, if, if babies are basically innocent, then no baby would ever die. And it also shows itself, original sin shows itself in our human behavior. You don't have to teach someone how to sin. You don't have to teach someone how to lie and to hate and to get angry and violent. And yet we so naturally do that. Why? Because we are in because we have original sin. We ha our sin is is with us our entire lives. Number 7. How will understanding of the doctrine of original sin assist parents? Well, it helps us to deal with uh, things like grounding kids for their sins and then showing them the love of Christ because that's what really changes hearts and minds is the gospel. But also the basic understanding of the doctrine of original sin really kind of pushes parents to take advantage of the great blessing of baptism, which recreates us in the image of God. Number eight, in addition to creating, preserving, and protecting us, what else according to the following passage has our Heavenly Father done for us? And why has he done this? Very familiar passage of John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Why has God taken care of the problem of original sin? Why has God taken care of all of our sin? Because he loved us. And how did he do that? Through his son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died on the cross, rose from the dead for our salvation. What did Luther have to say? Do you not know that the prince of this world has been judged? He is no lord, no prince anymore. You have a different, a stronger lord, Christ, who has overcome and bound him. The devil can do no more than a bad dog on a chain. Because it is tied and you avoid it, it cannot bite you. Let's look at the closing prayer. Father, we have sinned. We are not worthy of any of your blessings. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus, our Savior. Day by day, by the working of your Spirit, renew in us your image to the glory of your name. Amen. Our homework for next time, memorize the first article of the Apostles' Creed and Martin Luther's explanation. Until next time, may God bless you.